Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is anointing Jesus with oil. Last week, we examined the first of two stories of women who anointed Jesus with costly perfume. The first took place in Galilee, and the second took place in Bethany, near Jerusalem, shortly before Jesus was crucified. The first woman who anointed Jesus was a stranger to him and someone who was not invited to a dinner held at a Pharisee's home. The second woman who anointed Jesus was a beloved friend, Mary, the sister of Martha, and the brother of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. A Pharisee by the name of Simon, who invited Jesus to a meal at his home, disrespected him by not washing his feet or anointing his head with oil when Jesus arrived for the dinner. The second host, also known as Simon, this time Simon the leper, honored Jesus properly at his home in Bethany. Simon invited Jesus, three of his closest friends, and his disciples to a festive celebration at his home. Matthew, Mark, and John make it clear that the disciples of Jesus also attended the dinner party. During the meal, Mary was prompted by the Holy Spirit to give Jesus an extraordinary gift. Mary took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. John chapter 12 and verse 3. Have you ever felt the Holy Spirit leading you to do something completely spontaneous and unexpected by others? You might be criticized or thought of as being wasteful, but if the Holy Spirit is leading you, do it and God will honor you for your generosity. Do something spontaneous for your family. Do something spontaneous for your children. Do something spontaneous for a stranger. Do something spontaneous for a needy person. John tells us that after Mary anointed Jesus, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. John chapter 12 and verse 3. Spontaneous or unexpected acts of kindness have a lasting impact on others. The air was filled with the generosity of Mary's gift. Jesus taught that when we do something generous for others, it is the same as doing something generous for him. Her gift was not only spontaneous, it was generous. Generosity often makes others uncomfortable. Not just Judas, who was stealing money from Jesus, but all of the disciples disapproved of Mary's act. Matthew said, And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Matthew chapter 26, verse 8 and 9. Mark reported them as saying, This ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denera and given to the poor. Mark chapter 14 and verse 5. 300 denera was more than a year's wage for a typical working person in that day. Last week, we learned that the best nard is grown on the banks of the Ganges River in India, in Nepal, and Tibet. This helps us understand how generously and sacrificially Mary loved Jesus. Mark makes the sad comment that all the disciples scolded her for, for being sacrificial. Mark chapter 14 and verse 5. Religious people seem to enjoy criticizing spiritual people who are free to accept, express their sacrificial love for Jesus. If someone's personal sacrifice causes you to be uncomfortable, perhaps it's time to examine your heart. 
If you're uncomfortable with the idea of Jesus dying for all of your sins, then perhaps you are uncomfortable with how much Jesus loves you. The Bible says, One will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good one, one would even dare to die. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. When we lay down our life to follow Jesus, we are not wasting our life. In the eyes of Jesus, we are doing a beautiful thing. Whatever sacrifice you have made to serve Jesus is a beautiful thing. Jesus replied to the criticism of the disciples by saying, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 10. What they called wasteful, Jesus called beautiful. Not only was her gift beautiful, she gave her very best. Jesus said, she has done what she could do. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 10. Have you done everything that you can do for Jesus to express your love for him? Not only did she do everything she could do, she appears to have known what was going to happen to Jesus. She gave spontaneously, she gave generously, she gave sacrificially, but note with me that she gave prophetically. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. John chapter 12 and verse 7. The phrase, that she may keep it for the day of my burial, could easily be translated, leave her alone because she intended to keep it for the day of my burial. Mary was keeping these spices for the day when Jesus would be crucified as he said he would. But one has the feeling she just could not wait any longer. She wanted to express her love for Jesus while he was still alive. Jesus said, in pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for my burial. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 12. Once again, Jesus has announced that it was God's will for him to be crucified and buried. It is clear that Mary knew that Jesus would be crucified. Her spontaneous gift prophesied about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It also prophesied about the return of Jesus to earth at the end of the present age. Jesus made a profound statement about Mary. He prophesied that her act of love would be talked about everywhere in the world. Jesus said, truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Mark chapter 14, verse 8 and 9. Through this message, I am helping to fulfill the prophecy that Jesus made about Mary's act of love. You might be hearing this story for the very first time. I invite you to see Jesus through the eyes of Mary. Love him like Mary did. Worship him like Mary did. Trust him like Mary did. Ask him to forgive you of your sins like Mary did. Let the fragrance of being forgiven for all of your sins become evident to all who come in contact with you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let me take a few moments and pray for you. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Savior. He is coming back. He's coming back to receive those who are prepared to receive him, who have accepted him as their savior, who will be with him for eternity in heaven. Think about who's making this offer to you. It is Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead. He has power over death. If he had power over death in life, he will have power over death in eternity. Think about who is 
asking you to trust him. Simon the leper had been healed of leprosy. Jesus healed many people of leprosy. He can heal you as well. You have a skin disease, and it's a rash on your body, and uh, it's uncomfortable, and it's itching, and doctors have given you every medicine they can give you, and nothing has worked. I command your skin disease to be healed right now in Jesus' name. Uh, you have been sent home from a hospital with a terminal disease. You're on hospice care right now, and you're with your family waiting for the end to come. I just speak to you in Jesus' name. Be healed right now. Cancer, go in Jesus' name and be raised up to life by the power of Jesus. If you have been touched in this message today and you've just received a healing or just come to know Jesus as your Savior, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.